All right, so I went out fishing this morning and the only thing I can get bit on is a diver and bait. So I'm going to tie up some spawn sacks because right now the way things are with lots of small, uh, it's just the spawn sack I think is a good way to go. And if you haven't seen, you know, how to, how to tie up or how to use spawn sack, then you want to watch this because I'm going to show you. Now there might be some people out there, and I know there's a couple guys I know that are going to be upset that I'm showing you this because they think it's some sort of secret, but actually this stuff has been around forever, you know, different brands. What we have here in the shop is uh, Atlas Mike's Spawn Netting, which is real popular, you know, $2.60. Um, comes in orange, pink, green, and chartreuse. Um, the thing is, back, you know, a long time ago, like when I, I don't know, when I started fishing for salmon, I guess like I was in high school, we didn't have a lot of good cures and everything. There was no pro cure. We, uh, I used to cure with sugar, a little sugar, salt, uh, borax, and little packages of Kool-Aid, you know, the little packages with a little picture of the, the guy in the smiley face on the picture, you know, little packages, uh, cherry Kool-Aid. And that, that's what we had, but it didn't do a real good job of toughening up your skein so much. It was just different back then. And so spawn netting was, I think, more popular way back then because it just was a good way to hold your eggs together and you could fish your eggs longer. And it was just better. And then it, it, spawn netting seemed to kind of go away for a long time, but now it's getting more popular. A lot of people come in the shop and buy and spawn netting. And it does, like this morning, I, I was just getting picked to death on regular pieces of row. I just couldn't, you know, back back down there and pretty soon your bait's gone because, you know, the smolt and everything else is picking your, your row to death. And I switched to using some spawn netting with diver and bait. And this little, with a little water, little junior diver. Putting my bait behind the, the Brad's junior diver. And that worked good for the, the uh, jack salmon anyway. That's all I got. Uh, for, uh, jack salmon this morning. That, that's all I could get for some reason. But anyway, I guarantee you, jack salmon like this. <laughs> but the others do too. So we're just going to take a little bit of piece of this and cut that about like that. Layer down. Then just take a little piece of row. This is just a row that I just pulled out of the refrigerator here at the shop. Okay, so I haven't dried this anymore. You know, I, if I was going to back bounce this, I would, or not put it in spawn netting, I would want to dry this row out a little bit more, but it's fine just like this. All right, so set it in there. Gather up the corners. So I got that, and I get hold of it best you can. And I'm going to give it a little twist. I got maybe a little too much egg in there, but I think that might work. So I've got that uh, locked in. And what I'm using here is a Fishfield Ghost Thread. It comes with a little container, which is just awesome because you keep your, your thread clean. It's just a lot easier to deal with. And just get it started around there. And I'm just going to give it a wrap. Wrap it nice and tight. Okay, and this thread's pretty strong. I'm pulling on that fairly hard. And I'm gonna give it a few looser wraps. And then I'm gonna pull down tight and dig that in. So it's like, have you ever put braided line on your reel too loose? And then you like set the hook on a log or something and that line buries down into itself? Well, that, that's what I'm trying to do here. So you always wanna put your line on your reel really tight. But having those loose wraps and then some tight wraps really gets it on there tight. And then I'm, all I'm gonna do, you know, you can throw in a few half hitches if you want, like a lot of people do, but you don't need to, especially with this type of thread. But I'm just gonna pull down that tight, and there you go. I got a little ball of gold right here. So then I'm still holding on to that, you know, the, the outside of the wraps there. And then just take the scissors and, oops, I got my glove, no. <laughs> And there you go. That is a fish catching little piece right there. Okay, so I've got that ready to go. Now, just got to get this on your hook. Now, on your hook, gonna have an egg loop, probably. Uh, this is just a bare hook, but you know, even with the egg loop on there, I, I don't like to use the egg loop with the spawn sack. I suppose you could, but it just, it just doesn't really work right. So, 
what I, like do what I was doing this morning, if you have access to sand shrimp, good sand shrimp is the way to go. So I tear off the claws, and this is a real small little sand shrimp. And these are actually frozen. You know, I know a lot of you don't think frozen sand shrimp work, but they do. I always, you know, even though I had fresh sand shrimp I could have grabbed this morning, but I didn't. I've got these frozen ones in the in the freezer, and they work just fine. As long as they're frozen fresh, they're they're perfect. So I just put on sand shrimp. Go ahead and tear that head off. It's a nice little piece of sand shrimp on there. And you don't, if you don't have sand shrimp, it's not like you can't catch a fish without sand shrimp. But um, this, the water that I've been fishing, this fish sure do seem to like sand shrimp. Then I'm just going to put the egg on like that. Okay. Now, the thing is, if you fish it just like that, it's just going to fall off, right? It's just going to push back towards the back of the hook, and that's no good. So that's where the bait button comes in. I always use a bait button instead of the egg loop on this. And that bait button slips up there like that. And now that's going to stay tight right there up towards the eye of the hook. You got a little piece of sand shrimp on there. Get your eggs on there. And this fish can't resist it. I guarantee it. And you, you could put the sand shrimp on behind the egg. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. And if you're, if you're tying them up in the morning, like right when you're fishing and you got your shrimp and you got your eggs and you're doing the spawn net thing, you can put the sand shrimp right in your spawn net. But you know, it, sometimes that just makes it bigger than you want, but you just need a little piece of sand shrimp. But careful with doing that because eggs will last a long time in your refrigerator, but the sand shrimp won't. So don't don't think that you can keep you know your sand shrimp smelling good with your eggs for several days in the refrigerator because that's not going to work out. But anyway, that was catching fish this morning. I guarantee you, give us a try, you'll catch them too. So now I'll show you one last thing here. Got a good container to put them in. This is a new box from Spro. It's just a plastic container, but it's like a really good one. You know how you've tried butter dishes and you know, all kinds of things. Probably you've tried to keep your bait in or your kokanee corn. Kokanee guys are gonna love these things. The first thing I did when we got them was I filled one with water to see if it was watertight, and it is. This thing is a really good container. And you put that. Also put my my baits in there but when this locks down tight it's on there tight and it's like airtight and just beautiful so these boxes are awesome they're a little on the pricey side you know they're 1650 and i wish they weren't that much and i just it's just it is what it is but they are an excellent quality box so i hope you're catching some fish and be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel and we'll be uh, getting back at you soon